So if you run our scene now, you can see that it's going to print the array. And here's how the array is working. A instance ID and the node parent, which is the test unit. So this is working as expected. And you can see once we exit the array, it's the dictionary is empty. All right. So now we have a group for our selection to work. So now let's create the selection code. So now let us start to create our selection box code. So let's go here back to the player interface. So now let's go ahead and create some internal variables, which we should not be able to access out of this node. And this is just for our sake for code structure. So these variables are going to be a mouse left click, which is going to be a Boolean. Let me call this mouse left click. And this is going to be false by default. We also are going to need a new internal variable, which we're going to call it the drag rectangle area. So this is going to be the rectangle tool, which is going to control the drag box. So let's now update the drag rectangle based on our inputs. So let's go here and let's create a new function, which are going to call it underline inputs. And this is a input, say input event. So let's type here, put event and this returns nothing, so void. So we're going to say if input is action press, just pressed. And I don't remember if I have one here. So let's go to our project actions to see the inputs that I already have here because I don't believe I actually made one. So I made one for the right mouse. So let's create a new one. Mouse left click. And let's add here the input of the left mouse button. So I believe this should work. Now we have here, we can add the mouse left click. So if we just pressed the left mouse button, we are going to start to update and the rectangle. So the first thing we're going to say here as a comment is this runs just once. So what I want to show you is this is quite different than if input is action pressed. So what is different from these two functions? This one will keep running. So this is a, like a loop function. It's going to keep listening by each, I believe it's process. The input is process. So for each process tick is going to ask if the action is pressed and run what you give it. This guy right here, on the other hand, just runs once. So when you start to click the mouse, it's going to run the code just once. So this is not a loop, and this is a loop. That's quite a difference here. Is to get our box node that e, what is it here? Our drag rectangle area to be positioned on the mouse position. So we're going to say position equals to get global mouse position. So when we start to click, we're going to teleport the drag box area to the position of the mouse. And we also are going to say here that the mouse left click is equal to true. Then if we release the mouse, so we're going to copy this, but instead of just pressed is action, just released and same thing. This is just going to run once. So once the player left go of the mouse, we are going to cast a selection function. So cast selection, it returns nothing. This will be a temporary function we're going to do later. So it's going to cast the selection. We also are going to say the mouse left click equals false. And I'm going to say something else here. Let's just say, or yeah, let's just leave it like this. So we are going to update the mouse now on the process here. So let me just static type this by defining the others float and say this function doesn't return nothing. 
So on the process function here, we're going to say the following. If the mouse is left clicked, so if we start already to press the mouse, we're going to say if our nine patch rectangle, so our UI select drag box. Okay, and here's something to be aware of. The name of the node here is drag box, but I name it UI select. So I think I can rename this. So you can select any portion of the code and press Ctrl R. This is going to give you a replace menu here. And I'm going to replace that name with UI drag box. I think it works best. And you can match the case and hold so it doesn't replace stuff you don't want. So now it's called UI drag box. And so if our UI drag box is not visible, so visible is a property, and when to put this as negative, then we put the exclamation point. So we're saying here, if the UI drag box is hidden, then we should then first say if the drag rectangle area size its length squared is higher than a minimum. So let's create a constant here. So constants, and our constant is going to be a UI min drag squared. This is going to be an integer. Let's give it something pretty high, like let's say 164, 128. And I'm going to show you why this in a minute. So let's continue here. If drag box is required, then our constant, which is min drag squared. If that's the case, then we're going to turn our drag box visible. So UI drag box visible equals true. So let's read this code here. If we have our mouse already pressed, we're going to check if our UI drag box is visible. If it's not visible, then we're going to ask if the rectangle of the selection is higher, its size is higher than our minimum, which is our constant here. And we chose the length square because it's faster than just length, because you have both these methods inside the rectangle. Then if all those conditions are true, we are going to display our UI drag box. And with this code, we can run our scene, and I believe this already works. But because our UI drag box is small, it's going to be a tiny pixel somewhere. So let's now update the drag box. So let's go to the process. So let's go here now and update our drag rectangle area. So let's say here. If, yeah, we can update without it being visible. Why not? So drag rectangle area size, it's going to be equal our drag rectangle position and minus, so let's put in here, our current global mouse position. So what this does, is the following. With just this code, I think it's going to work. If we click and drag, yeah. Now we need to update the code here. So we need to tell the night patch to be updated. So I'm going to say, and this code, we can actually use its visibility. So let's go here, else. Then what we're going to say is, actually I could create a function here. Function update UI drag box. So this is going to update our drag box. And we're going to call it right there. So how are we going to update? Well, first the position. So UI drag box position equals to the drag rectangle area dot position. So let's see if this already works. And as you can see, the start position already works. Okay. 
So now let's grab the size. So UI drag box dot size is equal to our drag rectangle area dot size. Now we should copy the size of it. And we already have somewhat working. Okay. There's a tiny delay here, but I don't know what that's about. But as you can see, this already works. But now we have some issues. If you click and drag backwards, it doesn't work. So what's happening here is that the nine patch rectangle does not scale backwards. So let's test this. Let me just unzoom that. If we grab our UI drag box and we scale it backwards, it doesn't go to negative. So what's happening here is that the control can only have a positive size. So if we go here on layout, transform, you can see the size here being updated, but it, but it doesn't accept negative values. The way we are going to make this work is by multiplying by negative numbers the scale. So then we should be able to select the other side. So this true code is going to be much simple. Let's go back here. Let's do the following. And one of the things that I also notice is that UI drag box. So the position of the drag box can be teleported right after we set the drag box. So it's, it's, this code is just going to be called here once. Whereas if we leave the code here, it's going to be called for every process. So this yeah. just turn the function and then it's going to behave the same. So let's now implement our click backwards. So we are going to ask the following. If the drag rectangle area dot size dot x it's minus than zero so it's less than zero then we're going to say that our ui drag box dot scale dot x equals minus one and if that is not the case then we are going to put it as a positive let me just press tab here so this is going to be positive. So let's copy this. And we want to do the same thing. But now for the y axis, so let's just replace these. So what is going here is the following. We're going to detect when to swap the code here. So the scale is, is going to need to be swapped for us to be able to select backwards because the UI drag box does not allow that. So Let's just put some comments here to know what they are doing or try to do because this also can help you later to read. So detect when to scale your drag box backwards. And because night patch only allows positive size. And this is just for us to remind later. Now, if you run this, it should be able to work. So it works by default. And if we go backwards, it kind of work. So something is happening. It's not working here. And let's see if we got any errors. And there's some script comments here, but nothing hard. So. I think what's happening here is our drag rectangle area is not, it's giving a negative size. So let's try this and see if it fixes it. So I just added an ABS right there and it works.